Okay, hi everyone. I'm going to take a different approach to my talk. Hopefully it will resonate with all of you and underscore some of the talks that have come from Alibaba, from IMEC, from CEA Leti, uh, perhaps from maybe some of the other speakers as well. I have a few comments to make about what my, my talk is going to be about. First of all, I want to talk a bit about this new cycle that we're in as a result of digitization, at least in my opinion, as a result of digitization. And then I want to focus more specifically on AI and what its uh, effects are and what they're going to be. And then have, perhaps after that, I'll do a very quick, uh, a very quick summary. So a few comments about digitization. Uh, basically, this is something that's been affecting from the chip makers all the way down through the supply chain. In a nutshell, my view is that we have entered an absolutely different business environment than what we're used to as members of the semiconductor industry. We're in a phase of growth that none of us have ever seen or can comprehend. Around 2015, the industry, whether device revenue or wafer fab equipment rev revenue, began a sharp deviation from worldwide GDP. That correlation actually ended in that time frame, as you can see from the slide here. I, I don't think this is happenstance. I think that this is actually as a result of the initi initial stage of dig digitization. 2015, we started to see the use of IoT devices, the use of big data, the use of machine learning to actually drive how we produce goods and how we produce services in the world. That's what we all call now as Industry 4.0. If you fast forward today, in my opinion, COVID has accelerated the adoption of digitization. We've seen an insatiable demand for silicon or silicon-based components, and they're being driven by the use of AI, by 5G, the data centers, and mobile. So the COVID environment itself proved that we could be effective and efficient as organizations without being in the office. This whole work from home strategy that we're all employing, or these vid digital conferences that we're in like today, well, that's actually the start of the adoption of this sort of digitization technology. I think we've actually are experiencing right now a new shift in the industry, one that none of us have, have seen or anticipated. My next phase of my discussion, I really want to talk about how artificial intelligence and the rollout of AI really is it going to be an even more massive accelerant to our industry. The momentum behind the use of AI is absolutely building. It's really due in part to the massive amounts of data that are being generated by ourselves when we use Google, when we use all of these search engines, when we do these video conferences. It's just a, a, an incredible amount of digital data that we're generating on a daily basis. And what AI can do and does do, it trains machines to learn and predict what we want or what we don't want. And you can see that coming through with the ads that you see, for example, that are tailored to you on your Google searches. So maybe some examples that, that we should think about during this whole AI discussion. One is perhaps entertainment. We may become uh, used to an environment where we select the movie that we're going to see with the actors that we want to see in that show. Can you imagine a bespoke movie that you describe for yourself? It's coming. Netflix is already experimenting with that right now. Or let's look at what's happening, happening with AI for cybersecurity. You know, self-learning and being able to anticipate patterns of misuse, being able to look at how is Kevin Crofton normally using his or his accounts? Is this person really Kevin Crofton? Well, AI can actually look for these patterns and determine whether it's you or not you. Quite an interesting uh, feat if you think about it today. Or let's think about transportation. That's an easy one. You know, we talk about, and we've heard an awful lot about the autonomous drive vehicle. 
It's coming in many places around the world very, very quickly. Perhaps not in the US, but definitely around the world. And even more importantly, you can see the use of autonomous drive trains all over Europe already right now. And even Boeing is getting, has its own plans to go and design, build, test, and fly an autonomous uh, plane. So autonomy is all going to be uh, uh, built upon an AI platform. But maybe the most important example that we're experiencing today is how AI has helped solve or develop vaccines to cover the COVID situation. Do you know it took the most, the quickest ever developed vaccine in the world was for the mumps uh, vaccine. It took four years to develop that vaccine and deploy it worldwide. If you think about our situation, it took three months to get the first working VADS vaccine up and running in March of 2020. Today, there's almost 200 different vaccines being tested. Every single one of those, almost all of them, have been developed using AI techniques to actually look at the protein structure of the COVID virus and determine what would be the proper protocol to break that virus down. So the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, they're all AI-based developed uh, protocols and vaccines in and of themselves. So AI then, it just becomes the commingling of computational analyses, machine learning systems, data from real world environments and from lab-based experiments to develop solutions that solve the world's many different problems. At least that would be the hope that we should be looking for and what we should be expecting from AI in society across all spectrums. This might all seem a bit futuristic and maybe far from maybe our specific industry and even this, com this conference. But I think we need to think about this. Google is already using AI protocols to develop and deploy chips that are more efficient, that use less power, and that actually are going to be self-learning and AI designed again. Iterations that are coming from an AI-based architecture, which of course means we're talking about more and more use of data, which goes all the way back to more and more silicon, which means we've got more devices, we've got more capital equipment, equipment being built and it means for sure, perhaps for subsystems like what Comet builds. So in this ever-changing environment, in this backdrop, I'd suggest that it's impossible, impossible for single businesses and single entities to be successful alone. To navigate these waters, it's gonna be required that we collaborate across companies, up the food chain, down the food chain, even at times we are probably gonna to have to collaborate even with our competitors to satisfy that insatiable demand that's out there in society. At least that's what I expect we're gonna see in the future. I wanna say thank you to Semi for allowing me a chance to uh, present today. Hopefully you enjoy it, thank you.